It's time again for Weather Wagers, and you can find us wherever you get your podcasts, Apple, Spotify, Amazon, Google, and on YouTube. We're getting a lot of you on YouTube, and we thank you for following us. Brett Thackeray, Dan Tomasa, we Hello. Do. And we are into a new month right now, although in the Northeast it feels more like March uh, 3rd than May 3rd. This is this is wintry uh, weather. We're actually getting some snowflakes in our part of the world today. We are, and uh, truth be told, if it is ever going to be cold, so I'm starting a kitchen project at home, and I had to move our current fridge out to the garage. And I actually wasn't worried about the food spoiling too much because <laughs> the garage was nice and cold, and it was like an hour of turnoff time before I could switch everything over, and... You know, sometimes it's warm, it's humid this time of the year. This is anything but. I have still have a pile of mulch sitting in my driveway. I'm, I'm waiting to, <laughs> yeah, I, I'm waiting to, and nothing makes me feel more manly than mulching. Because, really? Yeah, because I'm out there doing work. And so the last couple of days, you know, I'm not I'm not going out there in 50-degree weather. Now, do you garden, too, or do you just mulch? No, I do both. Okay. I do both. Okay. But uh, I will tell you the, the mulching is a task. It's a task. And so uh, it's sitting there waiting to be done. And if I'm man enough, I'll get out there later and do it, but I'm probably not. I was going to say, today's a little brutal. Yeah. And yesterday was brutal. In fact... Monday here in Pennsylvania in the Mid-Atlantic might have been the nicest day, and even that brought showers, but at least there was sun in between. We need that vitamin D back. It's hard to know when to play these baseball games, and that is, of course, where we start. It is weather wagers, so we want to talk about baseball and the latest there, and, of course, what we focus on upcoming weekend series, because many of you want to go to some games on a Friday, Saturday, or Sunday, and you've highlighted some issues. So what's going to happen is the Northeast has been plagued by an upper-level low uh, that has been bringing some snow showers, some rain showers, chilly conditions, and wind. Now, that is going to lift out over the next couple of days, but as we move into the weekend, Dan, we could see some other problems. You've highlighted some areas of the country where you suspect there could be issues. Let's talk about it. Well, and even if they're not definite issues. So the first issue is going back to Thursday and Friday, so leading into the weekend series. Still some remaining showers from the Northeast the Mid-Atlantic. Not heavy rain. You could actually play through this, I think. I'm not sure what the Mets were doing last night. They had yet another rain out, um, but they were in Detroit. So it wasn't their fault this time, but I know Steve Cohen is not happy about the way the Braves series played out with the Mets this past weekend. We talked about that last week on the podcast. We, that we thought that that would be impacted. Uh, I don't care. They're two division rivals. Let them set. Uh, but I will tell you, uh, a lot of people, again, scratching their heads over some decisions. Yeah, so that was that was a decision made. So this is going back to Tuesday's game. So Detroit, New York. So New York has not had a consistent schedule so far. They played a doubleheader on Monday and it looks like they're going to be lining up for another. Yeah, now hold the map right here because yep. this is Saturday evening. And uh, again, you've highlighted four series here. We'll get into them in just a bit, but I want to mention it while people are looking at the map. Now, the Red Sox at the Phillies, maybe some rain on Friday. I, I think that's probably going to be playable, though. Uh, Orioles and Braves, now they're in Atlanta, yeah, right? So the, that the Braves, this is iffy because right. it's... So one of the things, to get a little nerdy on everyone, I know this is a sports podcast too, but to, to go back here, we're entering an El Nino environment. So what does that mean? Usually a very southern active jet. I think the Braves are going to have a lot of issues here this spring because... There just continues to be rainstorm after rainstorm developing just east of the desert, so into Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi, and then moving through Georgia. Yeah, and so El Nino is when the Pacific waters that are normally cool, they start to warm up. Yeah. And that's and what this we're is seeing. happening in a hurry. It's happening it, fast. It's happening quick. As we begin to warm up into the summertime season, those Pacific waters are getting warmer, and so that can lead to some unintended consequences with the weather. Tigers at Cardinals, St. Louis looks wet, especially Saturday. This is Sunday afternoon. They yep. may be able to play, but this is any time these games may need to be rained out this weekend. And lastly, the Marlins at the Cubs. You think Chicago could have some issues as kind well. Kind of an in-betweener. So yeah. Friday would be the day. So I tried to highlight the two that are Friday circumstances. I don't think the Red Sox and Phillies get rained out. I think there could be a delay, if anything. But because the Phillies have 705, 705, and then 135, I think they're going to be okay. Yeah, the, week, is, the weekend actually looks nice around uh, these parts, so this is I, I'm not too worried. This is a big weekend. Sellouts for Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Everyone loves when the Red Sox come into town because the Red Sox people come out too. So this this should be a lot of fun in Philly. And well, I, and and just let me cut you off here. We're we're coming off a shellacking in L.A. And I don't know that things are going to get any better. Why not come home to a team that stinks? Well, right. <laughs> I, That's I, all. I, I'm just saying it's going to be crowded, and people want to see some wins. Well, and you're going to see Zach Wheeler more likely than not. You will see. 
hopefully um, some better version of Taiwan Walker by Game 3 Sunday. Um, he's going through something right now. We'll get to that in a moment that has me a little bit concerned. Um, but the Orioles and Braves, I just want to mention the Orioles playing very good baseball. That's a fun series. Yeah, that's a fun series, and I hate that it's going to be impacted by rain. The Cardinals playing terrible baseball. Terrible baseball. And, and people think the sky's falling in Philadelphia. There could be some firings here coming up. Yeah, and I, I love it. I love to see it. Sorry, yeah. I hate the well, Cardinals. Well, it, it all goes back to I, how I, they blew the, the playoff yeah. game. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, it really. Right. That, to, that, to the Phillies. The yeah. game one mm-hmm. has really set the tone for that franchise right now because they sent down their best young player back to AAA even though he was hitting 260. Now, he was in a slump. Um, but still, there just seems to be something wrong right now, and it, it, it could be centered around the manager. Well, the mentality is odd, and this is, again, we've talked about this on this podcast. The Cardinals are one of those franchises that are always, they're just stable, and they yep. always they always show up. So this is a little rocky start for them to the season, but I do I do uh, think it's interesting that at least on, on Friday and maybe Saturday, that series could be impacted a bit by the weather. And yep. then, as you said, maybe Wrigley has some impact on, on Friday's series. And the Cubs not playing bad ball. The Cubs kind of a pleasant surprise in the Central, not as good as the Pirates. The Pirates are world beaters right now. But I also want to say, too, and I, I, I always go back to this, a lot of the national media people do not like the Marlins. I never understand it. They play teams tough. They have very good young pitching, and they're tied right now with the Phillies. Yeah, I, a, I a don't like above. the Marlins just because they always play us tough. I don't like facing them, even though they're, I, they are kind of a joke. I but think they, they're going to hang around. And yeah, that, they, that scares me a little bit because this division's already hard enough with the Mets and the Braves. You add in the Marlins, and they're pitching now. It could go both ways. They could beat up on the Braves. They could beat up on the Mets. They're they're young and hungry, though, yep. right? And so, uh, anyway, so there's your weekend weather impact. And I want to talk to you specifically for a second. Well, hold on. I just want to get oh. to this, too, because I know this is a big weekend for Citizens Bank Park. Temperatures improve each day. So Friday, Saturday, eh, you know, it doesn't feel like May. I will say that much. These are 7 o'clock starts? 7 o'clock so starts. A little, take a jacket. Yep, take a jacket, kind of in that twilight zone of – dropping into the 50s as the game really gets going but Sunday if you have tickets to Sunday enjoy that matinee baseball because it should be beautiful 74 light mm. winds that's baseball weather that in is May. base and no humidity that's the other thing I mean it's it's about as good as it gets it's 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 gorgeous so yeah all things considered though the Phillies picked a good time to be out of the state uh, early this week, yep. and we will like that. Yeah, so. there would have been delays. I mean, they they would have had trouble getting games in, just like the, the Mets just did this past weekend. Correct. Um, well done there on the forecast. I didn't mean to uh, to hurry you along. No, but no, I, no, no. I just wanted to make sure because it's a big home series. Yep. I know people get excited for it. There are well, people traveling. And we're going to get into this too, but who, who do they get to see? They get to see the Red Sox, which... No, no. Oh, Bryce Harper, yes. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, who I meant they, for the first time. Yes. So that's going to be, I mean, the crowd goes wild, right? So I think they're going to be up for that. But let, before we get into that, I, I want to back up here. We talked last week that uh, the Phillies needed to not play dead on this road trip. Now, the good thing is we went into Houston. We took two out of three. They didn't win on Sunday night, but two out of three against the defending. They were very competitive Sunday night, too. I mean, they had a comeback going. It was a good game. Yeah. And and so, yeah, the way that they played in Houston against the team that shellacked them in the World Series, mm-hmm. honestly, and against those defending champions really gave me a lot of hope. It was it was good baseball, and they were hitting again, and they just they, they took it right to them. Well, so, uh, the pitching was elite. I mean, that if you except are— Except for Bailey Folder. Yeah, if, if, well, <laughs> but even him. I mean, they could they could have won that game. Yeah, they could. They could. For a fifth starter, he's holding his own. In fact, I'll get to more if, about that in a second. If you but say so. <laughs> Aaron Nola, Zach Wheeler, shut down starts, looked like themselves. Looked Aaron, like the aces they are. And Aaron Nola coming out publicly and saying that he has been messing with his repertoire because of the pitch clock. Which we suspected. Yeah, uh, which we, we all suspected. Yeah. He, he says he's going in with – because everybody's focused on velocity – He's going in with lower velo because he's burning himself out by the mid in- mid innings, and we've seen these blow up innings from him. Yeah, and it, they haven't been; they've been tough to watch. Yeah, um, but I but I also think that um, as we talked last week, we knew that it was going to be a tough road stretch. So they get through Houston, look pretty good. We'll, we'll take yep. a series win at the Astros. Now they go out to L.A. and they're just getting. I mean, they're getting taken behind the woodshed and well, shellacked. And they are getting shellacked one of my favorite phrases in baseball is you're as good as your next day starter and the two starters Taiwan Walker Matt Strom really let them down the last two nights because they didn't go long in the game they were short outs essentially I think Strom was two and a third and if I remember correctly Taiwan Walker was four innings 
and now you're burning out the bullpen. So those guys are getting overexposed. Didn't a position player again have to pitch? Two nights in a row. Two nights in a row. Well, and part of it is, if you're Rob... Cody? Was yep, it Cody? Cody? Cody Clemens. If you're Rob, you got a big weekend series coming up at home. You don't want to totally blow out your pen that you're calling guys up. So, you know, Matt Strom is going to move back to the bullpen. He's he's done quite well in this hybrid role of his that he kind of filled in as a starter. But Ranger Suarez is on the fast track back. So that will be extremely helpful to get him back in the third slot. Uh, but I, you were talking about, um, you know, a problem. Yeah, so Taiwan Walker came out of two starts ago, came out with some elbow soreness. That was the cold night in Philly that he pitched. So maybe that had something to do with it. I don't know. But then he had no control in this past start against the Dodgers, which isn't like him. So I'm a little bit concerned that there's something going on in the background that he's either overcompensating because something hurts. But they said, you know, I was listening to it on the radio. Everything was up, 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 up. That he couldn't get the ball down, and that's yeah. usually indicative of shoulder, elbow, something not quite right. I, I, I just uh, let's take this from another angle quickly, um, because then we do want to talk about Bryce Harper, and um, we've got some other fun stuff coming up. But you know, I, I think what bothers me is, first of all, you know, I, I think you're right about the early panic here with the Phillies that you know it was April; it's the beginning of the season. Let's calm down. They're going to find of injuries. They're going to find their groove. Uh, we needed to, you know, play some teams where we could beat, and and boy, did we find our groove too with with the bats um, over the course of some of the series that we've been winning. So mm-hmm. we've been playing better ball. I think what disappoints me is when you talk about the Phillies run last year and you talk about all the elite talent that they have, and we do have a lot of elite talent on the team, including pitching, and you've got Alvarado who's figured his stuff out. Boy, is he ever. I mean, to a record tune. Correct. It's been That's been fun to watch. And you talk about how fans like us want Philadelphia to act like the big city, the big-time market that they are, and to be this team that is feared, mm-hmm. and that is really good. And so... You, you talk about that. And by the way, the Dodgers franchise is that. Well, but that's my point. Yeah. So we go out there and we look like, you know, the, the 1995 Fightins. Uh, you know, we just, we, we, didn't, we, didn't, we didn't even put up a fight. So how far away are we from being that type of a club that the Dodgers are? To me, it looked like we're pretty far away yet. Yeah, well, the Dodgers... It, it was an embarrassing effort. What the Dodgers do better than anyone, maybe other than Houston, is... And so, again, we beat a very good franchise in Houston, so that's what the paradox is. It, it, it's an odd week, for sure. Um, they develop a lot of young talent, and they build the core around it. Now, the Phillies have done some of that. Your Alec Bohm's of the world, your Bryson Stotts, even Reese Hoskins to some extent. Mm-hmm. And maybe this painter guy. <laughs> and, and, well, and, and that's the other fly in the ointment here. we still got to see him and still got to bring mm-hmm. him into the rotation. So I still feel like... There is a run coming. We kind of saw flashes of that with the Mariners. Houston series back-to-back beating two very good playoff teams. But you got to do it against the Dodgers, too. you got to do it against the Padres. Those are going to be the powers coming out of the West. Well, and look, listen, we, we can sit here and say the flip side of this is it didn't matter last year because the Dodgers got knocked out. What matters is October and November, and that's true. But I think from a fan perspective, you do want to know, you know, we got lucky that we didn't have to face the Dodgers last year in the playoffs. The reality of it is I want to see this team be able to play with anybody. Yep. And right now they're not there yet. Uh, yes, we did beat Houston, but we also played them in the World Series. I think we kind of know what that's all about. Yep. I-, I think with L.A., they're, they're just a cut above Houston. And I would just like to see a better effort. It was a little shocking to see how far away we are from that yet. Now, yeah. couldn't, can we get there? Yeah, I maybe, think so. Maybe we can, well, even I, in a couple months. And but. I've said to you before, going back a couple of weeks, Matt Strom is not going to be a starter for very much longer. Now, again, he, he filled in in a very good, solid role for us. But I, I think, in general, you want to see the Rangers Suarez of the world. You want to see Andrew Painter in the rotation. You want to see a healthy Taiwan Walker, because if you have all five lined up, that's as good as it gets. What does Bryce Harper's return mean to the team? I mean, I think it's everything. I think there was build up. Even Kyle Schwarber said last night at pregame, um, Tom McCarthy was navigating through all the player comments and everything at the beginning. And Schwarber said, I wouldn't be surprised if he had a home run on his first at bat. Now, <laughs> he got a tough draw. He got a tough draw against Urias, who's a tough lefty. Probably not the best way to, to return to action, but he looked good. He looked trimmed down, his swing looked fine. He did make contact in his first at bat. That's the only bat I saw last night before I fell asleep. 
but those, those West Coast games. Uh, and that's the other thing, too. Going to the West Coast is never easy, no matter how no, good your no, team no. is. No, no, no. And I hate those swings. I am I am actually going to get a chance to uh, see the other side of this that we're talking about because I'm going to the Dodgers yeah. game when they come to town in June. Maybe then they will impress me and I can report back and say, hey, we were able to hang with them on our turf because we talk about this all the time in sports. When you got to travel across country. It stinks. It stinks. So um, let's bring in Mr. Shiner here. We've got a fun segment coming up, but I just want his thoughts. I mean, is, is Bryce Harper human? Uh, maybe he proved last night he was, but, but he came back so quickly, and it means a lot to everybody. Yeah, I, I think it's a little odd that they debuted him out on the road. I mean, I think that's maybe they were looking for that spark. He, he says, said, yeah, though, it was, it was his goal, it was right? his goal yeah. Yeah. to be playing during the Dodgers series. So yeah. I think when, so when you're paying him $330 yeah. million, he can choose, when he, provided the doctors said he was okay, yeah. and they did. Yeah. So, well, which, and the, the doctors based out in L.A., so maybe that, that Yeah, I mean, there's probably other things. But, I, I mean, as a, a fan, you, you think that maybe that – first game back you'd want to do on a home series and really kind of get him the crowd behind him and sure. everything. So that being said, coming into this weekend, I think it's going to be Bedlam at the ballpark again, you know, just with him being announced onto the field. I think that's, that's a huge, huge thing. And he did have a rough outing. He made contact on that first one, but he did finish with three Ks after that at yep. four bats. So, I mean, it's going to take some time. You don't, just walk up and hit home runs unless you're Bo Jackson, you know? Right. So Yeah, he's got to um, see game action. Exactly. There's exactly. no replacing and it. it was, like you said, it was a tough matchup. So hopefully back in your own ballpark, sleeping in your own bed, <laughs> getting through your routine, all that, and it, hopefully he comes out swinging fire here this weekend. It's important, and I would, I would argue if anybody can do it. Yeah. And other I mean, than Bo, we haven't really, Bryce. We haven't really seen an athlete come back from injury like this since a, maybe like an Adrian Peterson right. and with a short timetable. I mean, this is – Record time back. Terrell from Tommy Owens, Chuck. I guess, was pretty fast. That was too, pretty big for too. A tissue but that, that wasn't a surgery right. related. You know, I mean, we're talking about an ACL tear, re Tommy, reconstructive this is, this that is AP Tommy came from. You know. John surgery. Yeah. Just think about that. Yeah, and it now was elbow, it's 162 yeah. days. Is that what it was? 164 it's, or something yeah, that he came it's, back. It's, and it's unreal. It is. And again, now the other thing, maybe. I mean, he's not a pitcher, right? Yeah, he but gets the DH. But still, mm -hmm. uh, it is it is very remarkable. So last week. You pointed out it was Dollar Dog Night at the Philly Stadium. We were watching this. <laughs> there the was some bedlam at the bank. They, yeah, they so were some made the field, I think. <laughs> this is more than one. Yeah. yeah. And so uh, tell everybody what you brought for us here today. Yeah. So, so um, Uptown Plaza here in Harrisburg has a hidden gem if you've never been to it. Jimmy oh, yeah. the Hot Dog King. When which, you call yourself the Hot Dog King, you better deliver. Yes. Now, here's the funny part. I've never had one of their hot dogs before. I've only ever had their breakfast because occasionally here at the station, we buy breakfast from the Hot Dog King. They serve breakfast all day it's all good stuff it was a quick order quick pickup it's here now yeah so we wanted to have a, a full-fledged discussion here we all have two hot dogs there's six hot dogs total we wanted to have a discussion about what you like on your hot dog and who wants to kick it off well let me just say this too i want the the viewers and the listeners involved in this so we're yes. going to be posting yes, this we want on involvement uh, Facebook and Twitter, and and we want you to hit us up online. We want to know, you know, what is you, your favorite hot dog place? And, you know, my mom grew up in the Lehigh Valley in Bethlehem, and there was a feud there between you either ate your hot dogs from Yakko's hot dog stand mm -hmm. or Potsy's hot dog stand. It was like a Pats and Gino's. All yeah, day. I, I didn't yeah. know this was yeah. a thing. And, and, and it's a thing. And so I've had both, and uh, I, I don't know. I, I'm, I, think I'm, I think I'm partial to Yakko's. But the it, it's a thing, and so we went down there, and you know her brothers like one place, and she likes another place, and and so, but that but that's a thing. But we want to know where do you like to get your hot dogs from? Where you are because everybody has that favorite place, and everybody has a favorite topping. So why don't we let Mr. Shiner, who surprised me today with this, you yeah. start? Okay. Well, as far as hot dog place, I mean, we already talked about the aforementioned uh, Jimmy the Hot Dog King, um, but for me, growing up. There's a Harrisburg staple, the spot. Yep, the it spot used to dog. be downtown on Second Street. They still have a stand, I believe, at the uh, Senators, Senators the Ballpark. We've Senators seen like some it. wayward employees drift over that way yep. from time to time. And, and that was like that spot that, <laughs> no, no pun intended, the spot you went at 2 a.m. after all the bars were closed. You got yourself a handful of dogs. Kind of like Canyon Pizza. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Very, State, very similar. That, that met a demise, though, unfortunately, at Penn State. Yeah. It did, amongst other things. But, yeah, you, uh, okay, so you so like that's the spot. My spot. Dog. Now, what is on? On that, please. Uh, a spot dog? Yeah, what is that? So they, they do, I believe it's it's kind of like everything. Yeah. So you get the, the chili, the onions, and then 
uh, cheese, and then whatever other accoutrements you want to put on. And after a, a night of revelry, that would be a, it, a, a rough. Uh, it's great take. until it isn't. Yeah. Let's put it that way, you know. But however, so I went with the chili cheese dog today because I do like a chili cheese dog. But if I'm at a grill or dollar dog night, I'm a plain Jane guy. Give me a hot dog and a bun. No condiments. No. Yes. Got to have ketchup. I despise ketchup. Wow. You I, despise ketchup? I despise ketchup. I, I now, only eat like tomato a... products if they are soaked in vinegar or cooked. Wow. I do not like ketchup. What about like a sriracha or a hot sauce? I, I do that, yeah. yeah, yeah. But like... Just straight tomato-based products. Not a Ow. fan of the tomato unless it is a cooked entity. And but, this is, but for you, the record, but you, tomato ketchup. But you are okay with with the plain dog. You're you're fine. Yeah, with that. Yeah, no, I, I prefer a hot dog in a Martin's potato roll. Another local reference. Oh, that's a good one. Um, yep. and yep, yep, yep. I, I don't need anything on it. Just give me the hot dog and the bun. I think bun. these are you, plain. You, rolls. But I have the chili cheese dog. I'll you, eat a chili cheese go. dog. Go. You eat yours, uh, and while well, you're eating that, hold it up to the camera. And then you go with your with your desired topping from the king. Okay, so I, I mentioned uh, last time, I'm always very careful with this. There's the chili cheese. This is my style hot dog if I get it at a ballpark. I want ketchup, mustard, relish, sometime onions. I wasn't into that today. But the problem is... Well, you know what? You have to be on TV. You don't want that onion breath. Correct. For the new newscast. Yeah, James, James would not appreciate that, but James Crummel... What is hard about this is if you take the wrong bite or you take the wrong squeeze, <laughs> you end up in some trouble. So I wear a Chase Utley jersey to almost every Phillies game I go to, and I have to safeguard that baby because that's a World Series jersey. Yeah, it, it, these mm. things can can just kind of score out on you. You're playing with fire and yep. a shirt and tie here today. I wore a this black is an older too. shirt, so I, I wore it on purpose. So the relish, mm -hmm. the ketchup, and the mustard, and then I I like I like just chili, no cheese. And that chili there from Jimmy's is just really good stuff. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, I'm going to get on. I, I got a second dog because there is nothing I like more on New Year's Day than hot dogs and sauerkraut. Ooh, okay. oh, I love go. some sauerkraut. And, yes, I put toppings in that. I put ketchup, mustard, relish on the sauerkraut dog. Mm. Okay. I get the works, and I load it up. And this is different than a sausage. Yeah, it's different than a sauce. I, I just like a hot dog topped with kraut and mustard and relish. So when I get ready, I'm going to chomp on this one. Did you get two of the same dogs? Mm -mm. Okay, what's your other one? So, not every place has it, but I got chili and cheese. Mm. Man, this chili, they, they, they spike it with a little something. Yeah, and it's, it's a very fine mm -hmm. round beef, too. Like I said, I, I cannot vouch for this because I've never had it before until today. It's good, though. I know why he's called the king. And so that's ours, but we want to hear from you. What's the best hot dog you've ever had? Maybe it's at a ballpark. Maybe it's well, a Chicago-style dog where they put the pickle in it. I don't like that. I've I, never had that. Was that a Chicago? I think it's a Chicago. I'm going to look that up. Yep. And, and I will say, like, dollar dog night, when they cost a dollar, mm. they taste different. I, I don't care. You know, I'll put down 10 <laughs> if I, you know, just for the deal alone. But. Yeah, so the Chicago style dog has pickles in it, right okay. on the right on there. No thanks, I like pickles. I, I don't think I need it. In well, the, isn't in that just a whole relish? Mm -hmm. I mean, essentially, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it is. Um, but I can't wait to hear these. So this this inspired you, the hot dog throwing. Well, should I throw this hot dog? <laughs> sure, sure. Somebody <laughs> might catch it. You need the cannon like the fanatic mm -hmm. has. You know, it's just to me since my childhood, it's just always been a staple of baseball. Baseball season. There's nothing easier to make on a grill at home, and they just taste good. They do, and and I'm fine. You know, that's a situation too where I may, I, I like to make my own chili, especially in the fall, and it simmers all day. And I do the Julia Child impression as I'm doing it. You know, <laughs> you just cut the uh, the onion and you chop it up and you do the. But I will buy chili in a can to put on a chili dog. Okay. Okay, and I see Wendy's has chili in a can now. Did you see that? They're selling mm -hmm. it at the grocery store. If you like Wendy's chili, get that. That's what I would get. I would put that on top of a dog. Cheap, quick, there you dirty, go. easy. <laughs> okay. I just described Dan Tomas. <laughs> That's right. There you go. <laughs> um, now, let's move on. Shiner, you, uh, you eat your tear into your other dog. I'm right Dan, there. pull us up on a two-shot here. We're going to bring Mr. Shiner back in a bit. I'll let him catch up. 
Draft was last week. We had Zach Berman from the Athletic on talking Eagles. Man, that was a lot of fun. He hit a lot of this uh, right on the right on the money. I thought, no pun intended, but let's take a ten thousand foot view sure. of the draft. Talk to me about your biggest winners and your biggest losers. I know who my biggest winner is. I'm curious, and I'm talking to any team. Mm-hmm. Uh, who, who who do you got? Ten thousand feet view. I said this leading into the draft. I'll say it again. The Eagles are the toast of the NFL. Literally. Toast here, here. Howie Roseman. Toast the franchise. They killed it. Absolutely, start to finish, killed that draft. And going back in history, all the beat writers I follow, it is hard to find a team coming off a Super Bowl appearance that did what they did. And that's the most remarkable part because built in, you should be at a disadvantage if you went to a Super Bowl the year of your draft because you get one of the last picks. Instead, the way Howie wheels and deals and thinks about future drafts, that's the difference. He thinks about future value and future picks. The fact that he got the Saints pick gave them the the 10th pick this year. Mm -hmm. They moved up to nine. They moved up to nine, right? And they got Carter. They got Jalen Carter, which... To everyone's knowledge, if there wasn't a background story here, he was the best player in the draft. Right. Especially, I mean, at his position, most definitely. At number nine. So. uh, A lot of people didn't even think he'd be there by number nine. I I mean, I'm going to disagree, though, and just say, again, from a 10,000... Food view, the Texans had the best draft. I thought they were able to come through. But see, people trade have been up critical to, about their second pick. That, that interests me that you Will say Anderson that. Jr.? Yeah. No, I, I don't see why they are critical of that. He was really, I, I think, all things considered, he was one of the better defenders in the draft, and they needed that position. They trade up to get it. So now you've got, you've got arguably the best quarterback with C.J. Stroud. And I, I know Bryce Young went number one. I'm just saying there, there were arguments that Stroud was better. You got one of the top two quarterbacks. You got the top defender. They traded up to get it for picks two and three. They're 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 treading water down there. You got to like what they were able to do and maneuver. Now again, if you're talking about the whole draft, sure, the Eagles had a very good night, and we're going to get into them. I guess I just, think, just... I just think what the Texans did was was phenomenal, and you know they they needed to make a splash, and they were able to do it. I guess you just expect, and as I add ketchup to my chili dog, just because why not? Mm-hmm. Um, I guess you just expect a bad team to not have a huge impact from the draft. You don't and, expect and they did. You don't expect an elite team to have such an impact from the draft. Shiner, you want to chime in? Well, I, I think it, it might have been one of the first times that we've seen two picks by one team at two and three that high up ever. I, I, I don't have an actual, you know, and that was my point. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I it's think just, it was just phenomenal. And I think some some of the pundits think that maybe did you have to go to pick three to get the guy you wanted in Williams, but that, that, that'll that play out in its own right. But the, the thing that – the fact that we were able to get Nolan Smith – That's what I mean. At 30? <laughs> insane. Now, he was projected as a top, top 10. 10. Right. You know, now I know he had the pec injury and all this other stuff, but some people thought he was the best prospect this into the NFL. a team that had 70 sacks last year. Yeah. It's, I mean, scary, it's scary that. good, but but I but I also want to say there was a lot of talent still sitting yes. there at thirty, which mm-hmm. was incredible to me. So you boy, all right, you boys want to talk yeah. about it? I, I won't stop you. Uh, you know, I was trying to give some love to the Texans and and other teams, but uh, you know, we are fans of the Eagles, so let's get into it. It's Georgia North. Everybody knows it. Uh, Howie Dogs. knows it. I think Howie. Didn't then how he go to Florida, which by the way is a little weird because mm-hmm. he's taking everybody. He knows but he, the talent. He knows the talent, and there's no denying it. So, what do you make of this pipeline from Athens to Philadelphia? And you guys already hinted at it, but I'll ask again: Why was this a masterclass? So, just going from a semantic standpoint, the the feeling is some GMs would be afraid to take so many players from one team just because of the optics of it. Mm-hmm. Mm. Second one. Look at that, ketchup, load it up. Kraut and relish. Look at that. There you go. That's a meal. As you were. So I, I think my point is simply he's he's not afraid. He's going after where the talent is. And I think teams overthink the draft. Howie was guilty of this in the beginning of his career. Now I think they are relying more on their eye test, what they're seeing competition wise out of the SEC. To me, that's the master class. Don't you think Philly Sports Radio and 
just fans in general were a little hard on Howie, though, even early. He was I mean, he maybe wasn't always this good, but I don't think he was the villain people made him out to be, was he? I mean, when it's you— It's Rager. Rager's what yeah. made everybody mad. If you look at the grand scope of everything else he's done— I agree with his that. his tenure— He's done very well, yep. but Reger was that just Marcus because Smith I think too, because can't be forgiven. Marcus Smith, yeah, that was a bad one. I don't was he involved in Danny the Fireman? I believe so. Okay. But but guys, you're going to have misses. You are, you yeah. are. But I think the fact that they were Jefferson was ones. the pick yeah. after Reger, everybody was like just dwelling on that. Now to that point, if they select Jefferson, they probably don't have Devonte Smith. Exactly. They probably don't trade for AJ Brown. Probably. So, you know. He kind of corrected that mistake in many ways. And I hate to say it, what has Minnesota done with Justin Jefferson? Catches a lot of balls and a lot of yards, but... They don't, it, they don't win they the big win? games. Yeah. So, well, who's their quarterback? Yeah. Well, and how much longer that is that going to be the case? Apparently, this might be the swan song this year. We'll see. By the way, I'm not saying he's bad, but is he a championship quarterback? No, I, I think he's just... He's, he's good. He's not elite, going back to James Franklin. <laughs> Correct. I, no, I, I would agree. Uh, last thought on the, though, the, the Georgia pipeline for this guy. Howie, I mean, he, he's going down there to get the talent. Well, it, if he was stretching to get these guys, I would yeah. be more concerned. If he was just doing it because I mean, they're, they're back-to-back national champions with some of the most historic defensive players ever. Okay? Now, one other thing to think about here. The reason Jalen Carter fell, obviously the off-the-field yep. issues, while at Georgia – uh, allegedly, one of his best friends, big brother, and the guy that kept him out of trouble was our own Jordan Davis. So you have a, a connection there. Nolan Smith, when he got drafted, was wearing green socks, and the first person to shake his hand, Nicobe Dean, at his draft party. Uh -huh. This isn't just talent. This is talent that played together and like each other. No one has an ego on that team because you said 70-some sacks, how many guys contributed. This, I think, is less of a... Georgia, Georgia, Georgia thing, but guys who know each other play together. And you know what? You throw in a, a Smith on a trade there, too, and you get your running back because Bijan was taken by yeah, Detroit. That was the I master mean, stroke That's where it's like, opinion. oh, man, one more Georgia guy. But then they drafted the corner, too. Yeah, so well, and Ringo, the corner. Ringo, was a, that was a projected top first-round pick, too. Or, yeah, at least maybe mid-twos at the yeah. lowest. And to me, that was a steal. And we know we need younger corners because of Slay and Bradbury. They're not going to be here forever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> let, I guess let's let it play out, but I, I just don't see a negative right now. I mean, Ray Diddinger, who we had on this podcast, is about as harsh of an Eagles critic as you can yep. find. Next to you. Probably. <laughs> A-plus. Yeah. He gave Howie an a Plus, well, he also did a very good job. Both he and Zach Berman, and they follow this for a living. They they mm -hmm. pretty much laid out yeah. what was what going to happen. happen, and they both had high hopes for this going in, and and it basically delivered. And I think even better than when you do better than a lot of the pundits are saying, especially the pundits that are critical that are and, dialed and, in, and, yep. and dialed in. That's saying something. All right, now I want to shift gears here to uh, uh, the Packers and uh, taking Sean Clifford. Uh, Penn State quarterback who had a great moment, and uh, you can go to our website, abc27.com. Our sports director, Ali Barubi, uh, had a conversation with him, and there is video of the moment that he found out he was being drafted. You know, in case you live under a rock. Um, and you might. The, the Packers quarterback is is gone. Uh, uh, Aaron Rodgers. Oh. He that is, trade finally was yeah, official. finally went through. He is headed to New York, New York, and uh, – Good luck to, to both parties involved Just there. Just the latest Jet quarterback swan song. Correct. So um, it's happened before. It has. Um, but That's almost similar, more ironic. Um, yeah, with a similar name yes. in Packers lore. So uh, just, a, just a question for you. My buddy and I had a, had a side bet uh, as to who would get drafted higher, uh, Stetson Bennett or Sean Clifford. And uh, I, I did think that Bennett would go higher, which I believe he did to the Rams. My buddy said, "I actually think Clifford could go higher. I think it's a. I think it's a. I think the outlook is probably similar for these guys. One of them is probably going to actually have a career, and one of them may not. And if you said today which one is which, I, I don't know that I could tell you. But getting back to my main point, mm -hmm. what do you think the Packers have in Clifford that they saw in him to bring him on board? Apparently, had a great pro day." Um, I, I, I haven't seen it, but I know a lot of beat writers, our very own sports team was there too to, to witness it. 
to me, the guy is a winner. He he has the guts. He's gone out there, played hurt. He's physical. He's smart. He was running the offense, and I think that that could be a big part of this upcoming Penn State season, that you don't have that field general out there anymore calling plays at the line. Obviously, Matt LaFleur runs a pretty high-flying offense. He must have seen or a scout had seen something that's going to work in their offense. Will Levis falling from the first round. And uh, we all sat here last week and said, this guy was Sean Clifford's backup. I mean, why is he being talked about going He was used a battering ram. One? Yeah, yeah and, and again, you know, he had some, some weaker moments for Kentucky, too. I, I just didn't see it. Now, physically, he may be better than Clifford he's in gifted. some ways. He is gifted. And, again, I'm not saying he's bad. Certainly not. Yeah. Um, I think the Tennessee Titans will be happy with him. But I, I wonder there who is going to have the better NFL career, he or Clifford. And I think it's a fair question. I think it's a very fair question. Um, my opinion would be Levis is a one of those guys that all the quantitative people get all excited about. He tests well. He grades the well. The nerds? Yeah, the nerds, the yeah. quants. Mm -hmm. You know, I think when you see him in a tight shirt out there throwing balls and it's going all over the place, it looks great. But I, I just feel like in game action, I still believe Franklin and the staff made the right call. By the way, you know who's had every single quarterback drafted? James Franklin. Yes. So we'll leave, we will yep. leave that at that. All right. I do want to talk about other things at college football because guess what? You know who needs a quarterback right now? I think I know the name. Mr. Ginger Hair himself, Nick Saban. <laughs> All right. Roll Tide. So they have two quarterbacks. Which Jaylen, probably means they have none. Jalen Milrow and Ty Simpson. Mm -hmm. And uh, they, they had their 8 day game, and neither one of them shined. And I think Milrow threw at least one interception, and he maybe was, more. He was the ballyhooed recruit, but I believe he's a little bit on the smaller side. Yeah, no, well, so is Bryce Young. But mm -hmm. And let's make no mistake about it either, Dan. Um, everybody at Alabama is a ballyhooed recruit. But you're, I mean, you're not wrong with what you said. I'm just pointing out these are all four and five star guys. Okay, but you got to develop them, and that, um, that's where that's where Penn State has had their issues. You got to develop these guys. You do, uh, but I also think that again, there again, you know, has Alabama been developing them or not? Now, what's interesting is this: um, Saban, Saban need Saban needs a quarterback, and I want to. I'm, I'm looking up a quote here by Saban because he was asked during the draft why they brought in. This is my point: they bring in. Uh, failed quarterback starter at Notre Dame, Tyler Buckner. Mm, they did. Right? Now, the reason that Tyler Buckner went in the portal is because, again, to recap, Notre Dame brought in Sam Hartman. And Tommy Reese ended up in Alabama. Correct. Mm -hmm. so, so you just follow your guy around. Yeah. Right. So you, you, you follow your guy around. Now, I'm, I'm looking for this Saban quote because I think it's a little bit revealing. And if you're looking for a reason to maybe doubt Alabama – um, this this may be, be it, because I think there was just a lot of questions coming out of this A-Day game. So when he was asked on whether or not he was going to bring in a QB, he said they were looking. They bring in Buckner, probably because of, as you mentioned, Tommy Reese. Saban said, we wanted to give our quarterbacks in our program every opportunity to win the job in spring practice. We felt like we needed to add some competition in the room. What do you make of that? Not a lot of confidence in the guys he has, I would assume. Yeah, I mean, what he's not saying there is none of them won the job. <laughs> and or, just is, re is this read between Saban the lines. being Saban, though? Because when you have a he plethora of talent, people. the rat poison that every, that's yep. coming in here and there, is this just lighting a fire under all this talent to see who comes out ahead? Or do we really think that the talent is not translating and he doesn't like what he's seeing? It uh, could be a little bit of both. Right yeah. now, I don't think he's liking what well, he's seeing. I really yeah. don't. And and who's to say, too, uh, this is just a specul speculative point on my part, but who's to say part of the problem could be they have to learn Tommy Reese's offense. Buckner already knows it. He does. Mm -hmm. He wasn't very good in it, but he knows it. He and had a very he, good, he had a very good bowl game. He had a very good bowl game. And I, we he also didn't be, play with Alabama. <laughs> no, he didn't. All good points. And by the way, the other point here is... He got injured. So yes. uh, I just want to point that out. Now, speaking of that, also, uh, I, I wanted to mention here, who are some of the quarterbacks that Nick Saban has won titles with? Let's go all the way back to his first title. Do you remember who the quarterback was when he won his first title in 09? Uh, it's a slow guy, I'm pretty sure. McCarron. Um, before McCarron? him. Before him. Greg McElroy? McElroy? Greg McElroy. Yes. Would you describe Greg McElroy as a great quarterback? 
No, he, he was a he was a game manager, and he was surrounded by a lot of talent. A.J. McCarron, now I think he was a better quarterback than maybe we want to remember, but he still wasn't like your Bryce Youngs or sure. your Tuas, sure. okay? All right, and then Nick Saban won a national title with Jake Coker. Remember that Forgot name? Forgot about oh, that yeah. name. Okay, so here, here's, here's my point. Um, by the way, did Bryce Young win a national title? He did not. Okay. I just I want to point that out to say that sometimes we do put a lot on one position. And Saban had the best quarterback he's ever had in Bryce Young, the number one draft pick for the first time ever at Bama. He didn't win a national title. Now, he didn't have these last couple of years elite wide receiver talent mm -hmm. at Alabama, mm -hmm. which you can and also argue is on Saban. Wide receivers there for a stretch. They did uh, against some some lesser grade quarterbacks. Mm -hmm. I think if Saban has the other talent around him, uh, they could still be just fine, and there is talent there. But the reality of it is, folks, right now, Georgia's just better. Well, let's also step back, too. This was this was a different Nick Saban back in those days, the A.J. McCarrens and the Greg McElroys. Their defense was like Georgia's defense. Well, who was yeah. running that defense? Kirby. Mm. So, back then... <laughs> I mean, I'm yeah, just pointing that out, It's funny how too. it all comes together. Yeah. Right. Back yeah. then... He relied on the defense to win games. It was just yeah. that simple, and they were suffocating. But he also kind of looked himself in the mirror, especially when Clemson was on the rise, Oklahoma was on the rise, and said to himself, we need to change our offense. We need to get more, dy more dynamic. And so that was the route he went. But in the meantime, the, the defense hasn't been as good. So now it's, it is more of a balanced team that they, they make some elite plays on offense. They run a little RPO. But the defense – Give it up 21 points a game, perhaps. At well, times. and I think if the defense had played better in the Tennessee game last oh. year and likely in the LSU game, they would have won those Correct. games. Correct. And so. then we have a whole different conversation about that, the way if, the season if goes. If they make a, a field goal at the end, yeah. we're not even talking about Georgia, and right? That's another thing that always <laughs> bites him. I mean, special teams yeah. bites Nick Saban. Always has, yeah. So it, that is going to be fun to Boy, watch it's play fun out. talking about this already. Oh, it it's, is. It's, it's, it's May, but we're talking SEC ball. A couple of other things I want to point out. We're going to move to the Pac-12 now. Deion Sanders making Primetime. waves at Colorado. I'm going to read a, a quote from an article here again from The Athletic, and Max Olson wrote this. Yeah, please um, help me understand what's going on here because I don't get it. Well, listen, there, there's no, listen, it's very easy to understand. And the reason that it's easy to understand is Dion told us he was going to do this. Okay, mm -hmm. so let me explain what he has done. No school has put more players in the portal than Colorado. Okay, after last week's departures, Colorado has now seen 46 scholarship football Oof. players enter the transfer portal in 2022-2023, wow. with 41 exiting since Dion took over. No other Power Five program has lost more than 29 in this cycle. Colorado had 83 scholarship players at the start of the 2022 season. Only 20 are still on the roster as of this podcast. Wow. So here's my question. Maybe it's a dumb one. Does he have enough to run a team right now? No. No, I don't think it, so. It's not like he's doing the Lincoln Riley thing where he's bringing a bunch with him. I know he's bringing a couple, but what, what did they he's have bringing, last year? He's bringing year? his son. He's bringing his son. Yeah. But the, the reality of it is, here. Let me let me make this simpler. He told everybody, if you're not good enough... You can pack your suitcase, your Louis, right? Get out of here. Mm -hmm. And he did it. He did it. Did he do it too much? That's the question. Now, this has either potential, um, you know, glory at the end of this tunnel or a dumpster fire. Now, the other thing is, for those of you that don't like to refer to student athletes as employees, this makes it. A little more challenging because he essentially fired most of his employees. Yep. yep, it made it more transactional. Now, having said that too, most of them weren't very good. Now, this is a team well, that went. This is, is a bad. team. This is a team that went one and eleven last year. Mm -hmm. But wouldn't you think if you bring in the right coaching staff, maybe developmentally you could have improved a little this year, well, and then maybe change over the roster? And again, let's let's take another program that actually flirted with Dion a little bit. Auburn. Yes. Okay. Did Hugh Freeze come in and just decimate the roster? No. 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 He's, shopping, he's shopping for a quarterback. Probably they don't have a good quarterback. Um, I, I think Hugh knows what he wants to run his offense. But you can't just get rid of everybody. Now, Auburn also did not go 1-11 last year. Uh, there, there was not a lot of talent on that team at Colorado. And, and 
I, I think the reality is here now that he's going to bring in some other guys, and he's going to bring in his guys, guys that he wants. So they'll have enough to field a team. The question is, what happens when injuries occur? Right. Where's and, the depth? You know, if, if Colorado can win four or five games next year, that's a success. And I think everybody would agree with that. But what if they only win one game again? I mean, to me... And those kids you brought in are no longer interested. Correct. This, Yeah, because you just they just saw their friends get kicked to the curb. It is a very different way to run a football cr- program. And he told us this was what he was going to do. But man, oh man, well, he did it. And maybe this is why... It took a Colorado to take a chance on him. If he was saying this in interviews for other jobs, there could have been schools like, I don't think that's going to work. And and I will say, if you guys saw the video of their spring game in comparison to their spring game the year before, oh. he might have already won. There, was, there were like right. five people in the stands yeah. last year, and it was a full stadium for a spring game. And it was on ESPN, and Chris yeah. Fowler was calling it. Now, he is a Buffalo, so that makes so sense. So if but that's his goal is to get the program to be a recognition sure. mm-hmm. and then work on the Well, the goal the, is always the money. The goal is always money, right? You know, so they got that. People in the seats, you win. Yes. Maybe however, however, keep this in mind. This all happened after that spring game. Yes. yes. So now um, your points are extremely valid, but but now let's see what happens going into the fall. Okay, quickly, Penn State portal updates. I, I don't have a lot here because once again, Franklin, they're, they're, spring is a quieter time in the portal as we've as we've seen now. Everything has evolved every year. There's a fall portal that gets active, and then there's a spring window not as active. Penn State doesn't have a lot to report on there. One famous name we know, Storm Duck. <laughs> Which <laughs> in and out as quickly as yeah as quickly Santa as it Claus came. It, it, very strange. Mm-hmm. Um, Jimmy Christ was the other one from the offensive line group um, that decided to move on. Devin Ford finally made it official. He's in the transfer portal. I still don't quite understand that move, but these these guys are going to do what they're going to do. And I, to me personally, if a program has invested this much into you, why are you moving on? But I, you know. When you got blue chippers in front of you, though. Maybe he saw that he wasn't yeah. going to be uh, getting a lot but of playing time. to the coaching staff's credit, though, they were getting him into games. And that's yeah. that's what I don't understand. Like, I, I just think, unfortunately, now we're going to find players that just cannot be made happy. Correct. So that's our, that's our portal update this uh, week. Uh, I want to end with some college football talk. Uh, my pen just blew up here on me again. That blew up worse than the hot dog did, but we're <laughs> going to try to uh, talk about this. So, gentlemen, the college football playoff dates have been set for when we expand to a 12-team playoff. So I should make my travel plans? Yeah, make mm-hmm. your travel plans and, and, most importantly, make your viewing plans. So this is new here, and we'll go through this quickly, but I, I do want to point out that, uh, again, we are expanding not this next season. So the 23 season into 24 is still a Correct. four-team playoff, and that's going to be what we've come to expect. Now, after that, the 24 season into 25, that becomes a 12-team playoff. There's not a lot of time here for these game windows to occur. College football has finally said we are going to go up against the NFL. We cannot be beholden to the NFL anymore. The NFL has basically thumbed their nose at college football and said, we don't care about you. They took over Thursday night. That used to be a very big mm-hmm. college football mm-hmm. night. It's gone. Uh, they're now coming for Black Friday, Yep, which is a very big college football night. Now Prime Video has an NFL game there. So college football said we're done kowtowing to the NFL, and there will be some overlap here. But this is the schedule as it looks. for the first. Remember, this contract runs through 26, the CFP. They have expanded it for the last years. Then maybe we're going to get some changes again in 26. But for the final two years of this deal, when they go to 12 teams, the first round playoff games are going to be held on Friday, December 20th. One game on campus, likely a Friday night, December 20th. That Saturday, December 21st, 2024, likely going up against regular season NFL games, there will be the other three games on campus. So you're going to have a Friday game in primetime, and then you're going to have three Saturday games, playoff games, your first round. Those games are going to be on campus. That's exciting. That's really cool. The quarterfinals, then, are what we've come to expect. You're going to have one on New Year's Eve, December 31st, 24, and then three, the Peach Bowl, the Rose Bowl, and the Sugar Bowl on New Year's Day. Okay. Now, the semifinals. Here's the rub. Now we move into NFL Wild Card Weekend. Right. So now we're bumping up against that. So what they have decided to do is, I believe they call it now Super Wild Card Weekend, because you've got games for the NFL on Saturday, right. Sunday, and Monday. Where the heck is college football supposed to go? This is why 
if I ever get to build the basement of my dreams, I'm going to have two screens because this is the world we live in now. Well, you won't need them because college football has decided they're not going to they're not going to have their semifinals against that. They will be played on Thursday night and Friday night. So you're going to have Thursday night game one, Friday night game two, and then it's all NFL. That is going to be a one heck of a weekend of football. Wow. So they're going to go Thursday night and Friday night, and then the national championship game will be a week and a half later, pushed back now, Monday, January 20th. Wow, that seems so late. It's late, but it's on <laughs> It's on about the 9th or the 10th now. Yeah. So that, that those are going to be, that's know, going to be the new quarterfinal weekend. And we, what do we always say? You kind of want to still build that momentum. Correct. And you, you, to me, college football is such a ratings bonanza you got to continue to expand it. There's so little things now that get people watching Correct. television. And that, I believe, might be, well, that you're into the NFL playoffs at least, so you can advertise it during the playoff right. games, but you're going to have th- four games before Christmas on campus. And r- remind me, so... You're still going to have New Year's Day games that are playoff games, and then you're going to have the semis the Thursday and Friday of Super Wild Card Weekend. Wow. I think it's the best that they could do, and I actually think... At least for the first two years of this, it actually is going to work out nicely. I think so, too. Now, my question to you is, you know about the TV contracts better than I do. Does ESPN still have exclusive rights to the playoff game, or do I we get to see it that, on ABC at all? No, I believe that's what what is happening through 26. Okay. Once 26 comes up, everything's off the table. Wow. That's where I think you want other partners involved. Some local networks involved. Yeah. Fox, CBS, others, you know, anybody that has the Big Ten rights, they're going to want to be involved. Mm-hmm. So I think things open up after 26. I'm sure ESPN will still be involved, but we will oh, wait boy. and see on that. So, But is, doesn't that sound – I mean, again, I think it's the best they could have done. I actually like most of it. I think I do, too. I think I do, yeah. too. I mean, it just extends. What I've always said is what is the problem with more football? all this griping and complaining about this 12-team playoff, and you're going to get football through the end of January almost. Yeah, I don't, I don't think it's a problem for the fans. I think there are some concerns about the players and player safety and all of those things. We're not out there on the gridiron, but they're going to work that out. They always do because why? There's money involved. Well, and the players want that money. Well, so. yeah, well, right, exactly. And eventually you're going to get into that with revenue sharing, I'm sure. So that is a look at the uh, the world as we see it here on this uh, first week of May. Dan, tell everybody where they can find us again and what our question is we want people to weigh yeah, in on. So look for us on Twitter later today and Facebook as well. We'll put up a poll. We want to know what you enjoy on your hot dog, whether it's at a ballpark or maybe just on the grill at home. It is the season mm-hmm. as we approach Memorial Day weekend. I know grills will be fired up. I've already seen people my neighborhood when it was warm in April. And we want to know where you like to get your hot dogs yes. from all across the country. Email us and let us know. Is there a brand? Is it mm-hmm. Kunzler? Is it Burks? Is it Ballpark? Yeah. Nittany Lion Franks. Yes. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. Give us a place. We want to know. And for some of you that may have picked us up with the South and some of you have tweeted me before about college football, there's got to be some good hot dog places there, yeah. right? So just let us know on our all of our social handles there. And if you want to find the podcast, you can, of course, do so. Any podcast platform, whether it's Spotify, Apple, Google, Amazon, and, of course, YouTube and ABC27.com. That is a wrap for now. We're going to have much more next week for you. Uh, enjoy your baseball weekend. Stay dry, everybody. We'll see you next week. Bryce Harper.